go to the, the book of Matthew chapter 4. I want to read from the New Living Translation. It says, Next, the devil took him to the peak of a very high mountain and showed him, this refers to Jesus, all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And the devil said, I will give it to you, he said, if you will kneel down and worship me. Get out of here, Satan, Jesus told him. For the scriptures say, you must worship the Lord your God and serve only Him. The Lord bless the reading of His Word. Let's pray. Father, we just continue, Lord God, to entrust this time that we have around Your Word. Bless all of us today. In Jesus' name, everybody said Amen. Please be seated. I want to share with you a mindset today. I want to share with you um, something that had kept me in the Lord and in the ministry over the years. I've been serving the Lord for, by the grace of God, for more than 30 years now, and I, I thank Him for that. That's an awesome privilege. And there's a mentality, there's a mindset that, that I have learned over the years that I would like to impart with you today. And in fact, not only that you can apply this in ministry, in your church life, but you can apply this at home, you can apply this at work, you can play, apply this in any arena of life or any area of your life. So are you ready for this mindset that I'm about to impart to you today? Here it is. I love what I do, and I do what I love. Five people. Somebody will get it. Sooner or later. I love what I do. This is my personal statement. And I do what I love. I love what I do. And I do what I love. Often, people would ask us, Pastor Janine and I, being in ministry, and they would say something like this, Pastor, did you go to Masayun? No, it's, it's not, not easy. I mean, from, from, from a distance, we would observe you. Oh, man, we, could, we can just imagine the, the demands, the, the pressure. The needs, the trials, you know, and, and so on and so forth when it comes to ministry life or serving the Lord. And I could sense their empathy. I could sense their concern. I could sense the compassion that's coming out from their hearts. But right there and then, every time we would hear people would say something like that, we would appreciate their concern, but we would always tell them, but you know what? Don't feel bad for us or don't feel that, you know, we don't need, feel the need to be pitied, you know, because we love what we do. Come on, church. We love what we do. I know it's not easy. I know there are challenges, but we love what we do. And we do what we love. Because we love serving God, we, do, we continue to serve the Lord. Because I love to do it, I do what I love. I love what I do, and I do what I love. It replaces makabugtuan. It removes the, the tendency to complain, removes the tendency to compare, the tendency to compete, the tendency, brothers and sisters, to say something like, Lord, how about me? How come they have it? How come they're blessed? How come they have that comfort? How about me? You see, if you do what you love, and you, do, you love what you do, it removes brothers and sisters and mga unnecessary, you know, expression of, Believe me, every once in a while, we will have things like that. May mga suga dito mga pagbati. But today, I would just like to impart this to you. And we're going to look at stories, two stories of, uh, uh, stories of two personalities in the Bible, and we're going to learn from them. But let me just impart this to you because this mindset is what has enabled me, enabled me and Pastor Janine to last in ministry by the grace of God. And we give God all the glory, but this mindset it comes from the Lord. This is the kind of mindset that we have endeavored, actually, to impart in our recent ministry trips. Had a privilege to travel with our senior pastor, Pastor Paul, uh, uh, senior pastor, Pastor Paul, Pastor Edwin, the director of our New Life Network and Missions, and then Pastor Herbie, the pastor of New Life Tondo. And it was amazing. It was life-changing, the privilege to represent New Life. Two weeks before that, we were in, uh, in Australia. The same impartation that we were trying to give to the people there, to the team, 
the mindset, love what you do and do what you love. If you love God, keep serving Him. Keep honoring Him. Keep worshiping Him. If you, if you love the church, keep going to church. Come on. Take part. If you love the Bible, come on, read it. If you love your family, come on, give time for it. Come on. If you love your marriage, if you love your, your, your spouse, invest in it. Are you here, church? Do what you love. Love what you do. Gone are the days, complain. Keep on complaining. Nothing. You, you, you know, complaining doesn't bring you anything. But heartaches. Right? And kakapoy halawas. You know? There's so many things to complain about. But how many of us would choose to look for some things we can appreciate? We can look at the story of Jesus. I want you to turn to uh, Matthew. No, we read kanina in Matthew 4. Before I go to John chapter 13. Let's just go to uh, Matthew chapter 4, right? We, we read it earlier. The devil took him to, a peak of, to the peak of a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world. This is, by the way, part of the temptation. I just, I just took it from that entire story. I will give it all to you, he said. This is the devil's temptation to Jesus. In other words, Jesus, you don't even have to go all the way to the cross. I can give it to you right now. Just kneel down and worship me. Just bow down and worship me. The, the, the world, you, you want this? You can get this. Just That's what the devil wants. He doesn't want you to go through the process. He, wa he wants you to go and, and uh, uh, to, to abandon the, 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 the principle of waiting and believing and praying and walking out the will of God. But anyways, I, I love the response of Jesus. He said, get out of here, Satan. For the scriptures say, you must worship the Lord your God and serve Him or only Him. When, Sa when Satan tempted Jesus about having all the, the kingdoms of the world under glory, you're talking about power and glory. When the enemy tempted Jesus about power and glory, the response of Jesus is this. First of all, Mr. Devil, God is the only one that should be worshipped. What do, you, what do you mean I'm out bowed and don't worship you? First and foremost, I need to remind you, God is the only one that needs to be worshipped. And my response to your offer to me of power and glory, service. Wow. Service. Jesus is saying, the people in the world, they have this distorted view of greatness. They talk about fame, popularity, money, power and all that. But greatness in the kingdom of God is being like a little child, humbling yourself and serving. Amen. To be great in the kingdom of God means to be a servant. Amen. So God is saying to the devil, that's the way of the world. That's your mentality. You talk about greatness, you talk about power and glory. But in my kingdom, you talk about greatness, you talk about serving. Yes. Learning how to serve. Humbling yourself. And I love the connection between worship and service. Because at the end of the way, you think about it, brothers and sisters, my service is my expression of worship to God. Your service is your expression of worship to God. It's my expression of love toward God. I love God, and my way of loving God is by serving Him. I love to do what I do. You know why? Because I love God. Amen. I love to do what I do because I worship God with it. Amen. When I worship, see, worship is not just about songs. Worship includes songs. Yeah. Your obedience on a daily basis, but your service is also part of your worship. Amen. Your giving is part of your worship. The giving of your life, your talent, your time, and your treasure. It's part of your worship, your response to God, your yes to God, your amen to God. It's part of your worship. Amen. I want to encourage everybody, if you're a servant in the house of God, if you're a Christian, learn to love what you do. Are you a worshiper? Learn to love how to worship God. Don't give God your boring moments. Ah, I thank God there are no people from new life, at least. Ano ako mga naibatian? Maray may nasa rin mo. Ah, kabuboring man yan eh. Kasi pastor, ah, may ako nabatian bihan ko. Maray naman kita kung nandida disco. Nasa ako, may nakita, didi Diyos ko. Mas maupay pa yun eh kung talang disco. Kino nasa nga yung maray nasayaw? Ay, didi ha mo nagkakalokso mga kabugtoon. Pagtikang palan praise and worship, we jump like crazy people. You know what? It's easy to spot the winners or the victorious 
they're loud. There's no such thing as a silent revival. I mean, listen to me. Imagine if there will be, let's say, how many billions of people on the earth right now? Eight billion, right? Imagine even if just half of the population of the world will make it to heaven. Listen, if you make it to heaven, if you realize you're already in heaven, I'm not saying today, okay? Like, eventually, right? Like, wow, and him. Don't you think you're going to show? Just the fact, Lord, I made it. Yeah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Imagine if three billion people will shout all together at the same time. Hallelujah. Heaven is not a silent place. And so what we're doing here is kind of a practice rehearsal. If you don't like worship on earth, You'll be bored in heaven. No, no, it's not going to be boring in heaven, but if you don't like it, you're going to be doing that for eternity. Yeah. Worshiping God. That's what you are born to do. Yeah. What you are made for. Yeah. I'm made to worship God. Amen. And part of my worship is giving God my time, talent, and treasure. You know, Lord, I, I just want you to touch this part of my life. No, if Jesus is not Lord of all, He is not Lord at all. I mean, you, you choose for yourself today. Mangangalagat ka Lord all the way or just partially? I, I, I encourage you right now. You love what you do. You do what you love. You're here, be here. You're going to serve God, serve God. You're going to clap your hands, clap your hands. You're going to say amen. Don't give me an anemic amen. Give God an, your Amen. Love what you do. Do what you love. It's part of your worship. I love God. I worship Him. Because I worship, uh, because I love God, I worship Him. When I worship God, I love what I do. And I do it because it's part of my worship. I do it as an expression of my, my love for the Lord. Are you here, church? So the devil, the world will offer you this glory, fame, as if it is not, if it is not. The, it, it's the very thing that will bring fulfillment in, into your life. They thought it was money. They thought it, it was fame. They thought it was material things. Only to their disappointment because when you get there, you realize, I'm not made for this. The world is not enough for me. Jesus is the only person who can fulfill, can fill the void, the emptiness inside of me. I mean, stories after stories in the scripture will, will, will tell all of us that Jesus is the ultimate answer to every question, to every cry, to every longing, and every heart. Right? Thank you, Jesus, for your amen. So they give God all the glory and all the praise in Jesus' name. You talk about the mentality of glory, power and glory. That's why so many people out there, when they have tasted power and glory, they're so intoxicated with that. They no longer want to let go. It's all about accumulating. It's all about gathering. It's all about receiving validation from people. It's taking, getting. But Jesus said, you know, in my kingdom, serving. It's all about giving. It's all about loving. It's all about... This is abundance. This is a scarcity. Wanting, asking, getting. If that kind of mentality is what you're operating from, that's the wrong kind of mentality. It's the worldly mentality. When you get there, you already have fame, popularity, money, and all that. I'm not saying all those things are bad. I'm just saying because people have, this, have a distort, uh, has that distorted view of what greatness is. They are chasing after these things. And there's a guy in the Bible, his name is Solomon, the wisest king that ever lived apart from Jesus. When he was in the planet, he tried to test everything. He tried, basically tested everything. Tried everything under the sun. Under the sun, look at the book of Ecclesiastes. That's the writing of King Solomon when he, he was kind of backslidden. He, he, he started by saying, you know, everything is chasing after the wind. There's nothing there. There's nothing to it. You, you'll end up envying the empty. People who are out there are empty. They, they are so isolated. They're so lonely. They don't have a community. They have to separate themselves because they're afraid. Bakit na po, man? I'm not saying it's wrong to be successful. I'm not saying it's wrong to be prosperous. I'm just saying you, you better not keep your eyes on those things. Yeah. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Yeah. Those things are tools. They're not meant to fulfill you, to satisfy you, to fill you. Yeah. Those things are tools to glorify God, to bless people. But only Jesus could satisfy. 
You be on the side of God, you will have be given this kind of mentality. It's a privilege to serve. I love to serve. I get to be a pipe. I got to be a channel. I got to be an instrument in the hand of God. Uh, blessing flows not only to me, but through me. I am blessed to be a blessing. I, I'm supplied to be a blessing. You know, I'm, it flows through me. I'm not a container. I am a pipe. I'm a vessel. I'm a conduit of the blessings of God. This is giving. This is getting. This is boring. Show me a person who is always trying to get. I'll show you a lonely person trying to fill the void. Show me a person who's always giving. I'll show you a person who's jo happy, joyful, free. Amen. That's the way of the Lord. That side, that's the way of the world. The devil says, bow down before me. Power, glory, I'm going to give it to you. Jesus says, shut up. This is my way, serve. Worship the Lord your God and Him alone you shall serve. First of all, God is the only person who deserves all the glory. And the way to this path of life is worship Him by serving Him. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. Come on. Amen. Lord. Hallelujah. Life is not about accumulating. It's not about taking or gaining, but it's all about loving, giving, serving. The path of life is about loving fully and serving humbly. Loving fully and serving humbly. That's the title of the message today. This is the path of life. Loving fully and serving humbly. If you have an opportunity to love, love fully. Love totally. Love completely. If you, have, if you have the opportunity to serve, serve humbly. This is the path of life. Path of loving and serving, not getting or accumulating. Look at this story in John 13. I love this. Starting from verse 1 to 5. The entire story is up to verse 17, but, but verse 5, the passion, I'd like to read from the passion. Please look at the screen for a moment. Thank you for your cooperation this morning. Hallelujah. I don't want you guys to miss this. It's very important. John 13 is where it begins. The upper room discourse begins. You know, Jesus is known for two things. When, he, when it comes to his preaching, there's the, the Olivet discourse or the preachings and the lessons Jesus had given in the Mount of Olives or in the Mount, in, in the Mount where, you know, all these Beatitudes, you know. That's, it's, it's called the Olivet Discourse. But there's another discourse. It's known for the Upper Room Discourse. He did it before he gave his life on the cross, right? He, with his disciples, this is where you find that he taught about rapture. He taught about the way, the truth, and the life, John chapter 14. He talked about abiding in the Lord and all these very important things that are imparted to the Christians, to the believers, people that God has a relationship with. And, and so these are very, very important lessons. So John 13 is a very important thing. And at that night, that night is, is so special. And I want you to see this, 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 the details of this story. It's, it's just so empowering. Jesus knew that the night before Passover would be, la, be, would be his last night on earth. This is crucial. Jesus knew this is my last night on earth before leaving this world to return to the Father's side. All throughout, listen, all throughout his time with his disciples, Jesus had demonstrated a deep and tender love for them. And now, now, this last night, he longed to show them the full measure of his love. Now, last moment of his night on earth, what is Jesus thinking? What is Jesus trying to do? Demonstrate love. To love, to share, to impart, to assure, to encourage. As we find John 14 verse 1, let not your hearts be troubled. What is he doing? He's going to give his life on the cross and then he's going to go back to the Father. But what is Jesus doing? What would, guys, this is just amazing. First, first verse. Look, before their evening meal had begun, the accuser had already planted a trail into the heart of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. Jesus basically, verse 2, is just telling all of us, everything is set up. Everything is set up. Jesus was fully aware that the Father had placed all things. Verse 3 is powerful. Jesus was fully aware that the Father had placed all things under His control. Some translation says, Jesus was aware that the Father had given all the power into His hands. For He had come from God and was about to go back to God to be with Him. Stop there. Verse 3. Very, verse 1 is important. Last night on earth, Jesus was fully aware that it is last moments on earth. Verse 3 tells us, Jesus was aware that all the powers 
had been given into his hands. So Jesus had been given both the opportunity to do anything that he has in his heart. And then Jesus had been given all the ability, all the power in his hands. So what, he can do whatever he wants to do. And he had the time in his hands. And the question is this, this morning. What would you do if you have the power to do anything? What would you do? We always have this game. John, remember when we would have this game? Okay, uh, Daddy, let's pretend. They would ask me. Um, they would tell me, Daddy, let's pretend that we are superheroes. So if you're a superhero, what kind of power do you, have, do you want to have and why? I would say something like that. Oh, I'm a flash or something. Why? Why do you want to be flash? Because I want to be fast, you know. If I say, let's go to, let's go to the USA. In a moment, I'm in the USA. I don't have to travel. I don't have to go through all lining up and everything. I don't have to apply for visa, etc., etc. It cuts, you know, the, the process and the, you know, and all the kakapo yung mga mga something like that. And they would say something like this. Ah, I want to be a person who's invisible, you know, so that nobody could see. It's a game. And we would say something like, what do you, if, you, if you want to be a superhero, a superhero and you can do anything you want, what kind of power do you want to have and why? It's an important question. You know why? Imagine if you have the opportunity, all the opportunity, and imagine if you have all the abilities in the world. Actually, I, mean, I, I believe this is the true measure the true measure of what you are made of. True measure of your true colors. Maram ka ba mga kabugtuan? If people are just given the power, all the power, it will, it will show what kind of color, what kind of heart they have. Why? When you give all the power into the hand of a person, if he has a bad heart, it's going to bring a lot of damage. Right? But if you give that same power into the hand of a good person, Person with a good heart, oh my goodness, the, the, the impact that he's going to make on earth. Sometimes I did not have problem. We have the power, but we don't have the opportunity. What is the opportunity? may opportunity lang yan. May nakita man. May daman nagmomonitor ha ako. Imagine if you have all the power. May daman iba, may the opportunity, pero what the power? I want to do it, but I don't have the means. What if you have both? Power and opportunity. Anytime you want to do it, you can do it. And you have all the means, all the power, all the abilities to be able to do what you're supposed to do. What would you do? This story tells us, ladies and gentlemen, that Jesus had both. He was aware that this is his last moment on earth. He sensed the urgency of the time. But he was also aware that he had all the power in his hands. I want you to see what Jesus did. Verse 4. So he got up from the meal. Everybody took off his outer robe. Took a towel and wrapped it around his waist. What are you trying to do, Jesus? Then he poured water into the basin and began to wash the disciples' dirty feet. And dry them with his if you'll continue to read on up to verse 17, it tells you that Jesus one, one was trying to tell, was trying to impart to the disciples a mindset, a heart, an instruction, a directive. In my last moments on earth, I want to impart something to you that is very important. And I'm demonstrating it to you right now. The importance of serving. When Jesus could do anything, anytime He wants. Jesus had the opportunity to do anything, anytime He wanted. What did He do? He loved fully. And He served humbly. Naaton kalibutan niya ginook yan, mga bagtuan. The culture around us quite the opposite. Why? Unahon na kanganin, unahon na kanganin loving, 
serving, it's almost, it almost sounds like a weakness. How pitiful that person is. What is that person doing? Puro na lahat gugma. Puro na lahat hatag. Puro na lahat serve. Kaluoy. Di ba nanuluoy kita, Danay? The very thing that Jesus had demonstrated to all of us, the most important thing to Jesus, last moments on earth, he was aware he does not have anything, he doesn't have more time left. Ikaw, kung ano at pinakalas na ito yung mga magawas ang pinaka-importante ay mo. Para kang Jesus, ang pinaka-importante is this, to walk in love and to serve. Never belittle. I want to encourage everybody here. Never belittle the fact that you are called a lover of God, a lover of people, and a lover of a servant of God and a servant of people. There's nothing wrong about it. There's nothing small about it. In fact, to Jesus, it's the most important thing. And I thought about it, Lord Jesus, why? Why is the most important thing to you? And, and the Lord made me realize by His Spirit. He said, Ram, so many people out there have so much needs. Helpless, hopeless, abandoned, forgotten, marginalized, isolated. There are so many needy people, not just physically, not just with physical food, but emotionally. So many people are lost spiritually. What they need are not self-focused people that are always after power, popularity, fame, or whatever. What the Lord is looking for is this, agents that will carry His love, agents that will be Come, God's can do it to impart to the needy, to bring something to the lost, to bring guidance to the ones that are in darkness, to bring comfort to those that are confused and afraid. What kind of mentality are you operating from? Wanting, getting, accumulating? Or are you on the side of Jesus where He wants to give, He wants to love? He wants to serve. He wants to impart. Come on. He wants to release instead of take. Thanks, Jesus. Are you getting this, church? The most crucial time of Jesus on earth. He did two most important things to him. To love fully. The Bible says he loved him to the uttermost. And then he demonstrated serving. He humbled himself. And he told the disciples, I've shown this to you. I want you to do the same thing to your neighbors, to one another. Loving God, serving God, loving people, serving people. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the path of life. This is the path that you're in. It's not about accumulating. It's not about getting validation from people. You know, don't misunderstand me. It's wonderful to receive gifts. It's wonderful to be blessed by people. It's wonderful to be, to be blessed, you know, to have your needs supplied. Don't misunderstand me. It's part of life. But, you know, the most important thing beyond all that, to have our needs met, to have our needs fully supplied and abundantly supplied. More than that, it's just an assignment. More than that, it's a calling. More than that, it's a purpose. Amen. Amen. Stand to your feet, church, and I'm going to close with this. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Are you getting something, church, today? Him alone you shall serve. Him alone you shall serve. I love Jesus because He first loved me. I serve Jesus because He first served me. You realize that even right now, at the right hand of God, Jesus is still serving. Jesus is still giving. Jesus is still thinking about other people. Bible says He lives to make intercessions for all of us. As Christians, brothers and sisters, these two things are very important to us. Loving God and serving God. Loving people and serving people. I thought about this. You can serve without loving, but you cannot serve or you cannot love without serving. 
hard. It's impossible to love God without serving God. Are you here, church? And serving God and people emanates from the love that we have received from Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, our lives are meant to demonstrate the beauty and power of doing what we love, which is serving and loving what we do, which is worship. The Bible says, you shall worship the Lord your God, and Him alone you shall serve. Demonstration of your worship towards God is your service towards the Lord. The demonstration of your love towards God is your love towards people, service towards people. Are you here, church? You say you shall serve God, Him alone you shall serve. By that we mean in the scripture, serving His purpose. David did that. He served the will of God in his generation. That means serving His will. That means serving His kingdom. That means serving His agenda. That means serving His people. That means serving His church. Come on, amen. That means serving your community. Amen. My worship is my service to God. My service is my expression of worship to God. My service is my expression of love for my Jesus. I close with this. Three main ingredients for a wholehearted serving. Three main ingredients for the wholehearted serving. Number one purpose. Why you serve. Jesus did what he did and he was fully aware of the purpose. Last moments on earth, he was fully aware of his purpose. Purpose is important. If you want your service to be sustained, if you want... Your serving of God or your service towards the Lord, brothers and sisters, if you want that kind of serving, a wholehearted serving, passionate ser uh, 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 serving, brothers and sisters, it got to come out of purpose. Why? You need to know why you are serving. It's because of Jesus. It's all about Jesus. It's all about the people. It's all about the call of God. It's all about the needs out there that needs to be met for the glory of God. Are you here, church? The main ingredients are namely purpose, why you are serving. Number two, passion. Doing with love. Doing it, mga kabagtuan, with, with inspiration. Passion. Passion is very important. God not only wants you and I to serve Him, but He wants us to passionately serve Him. Church, come on. Number three, perspective. The understanding of the urgency of the time. Purpose, passion, perspective. That's, Jesus was fully aware of the time that he had in his hands. Jesus was fully aware that right now he can do anything he wanted. But you know what Jesus prioritized? Serving. Loving fully. Serving humbly. Loving fully. Serving humbly. First verse tells us that he loved his people to the uttermost. And he demonstrated it by serving them. Humbly serving the Lord. Amen? Amen? Do you receive this today? I encourage all of you, receive this kind of mentality. You're tracking this path. It's called the path of service. Amen? Raise our hands to the Lord. Father, we give you praise today. Thank you for the word that you have imparted to us. We receive this with all our hearts. Thank you so much, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah for the impartation of, of this truth, this reality into our hearts today. Loving fully serving humbly loving fully serving humbly two most important things in the heart of jesus in his last moments on earth and had all the power in his hands and he had all the opportunity to do anything he wanted he loved fully and he served humbly lord jesus this year this is our prayer this is part of our prayer to become more like you. Teach us, Lord. Teach us, Holy Spirit. In the days to come, from now on, Lord God, until the, the day you come back, Lord, teach us that when we have the opportunity to love, we love fully. And that when we have the opportunity to serve, we serve humbly. Jesus, our eyes are on you. We are learning from you, God. You are our example. And today we receive this into our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said, Amen. Give Jesus a clap offering, church. Thank you so much for joining us. We pray that you were blessed by today's message. Here are some ways how you can continue to give your tithes and your offering here in New Life Takloban.
Thank you, church, and God bless.